Epic's Unreal Engine 5 is finally here. But we have one more thing to do, and that is to try out the Playable Matrix City demo that Epic put out to go along with this launch. So join me as we check out exactly what next generation games are going to look like. So the demo we'll be playing can actually get straight from the Epic Store in the sample section. However, I'll be using an already compiled version, which the link to which is going to be down in the video description below. But instead, I'll be using an already compiled version of it just to make our lives easier. Now, I haven't tested this out at all, so I haven't even seen it yet, so I'm in for a surprise. And oh, wow. This looks pretty cool already. Now, granted, our performance is absolutely terrible at only um, 18 FPS, so we do have shadow play going, so uh, that could be part of the issue. But look at this, this is absolutely insane. Now the low frame rate isn't like a big deal breaker right now, but it does kind of make it more difficult to appreciate the details because let's say with this character right here, when I like turn the camera for example, you can see like low frame rate cause some pretty like messed up stuff around her like hair for example and her face, which just makes it kind of difficult to appreciate the actually pretty huge amount of details and pretty much everything but like yeah what else can I say this is like the most realistic game I've ever seen well it's not really a game it's a gameplay demo but still you get my point wait I can fly fly liches means detach the camera and go through your own <laughs> it does not mean you can like superman your way across the city or whatever uh, that's a that's a shame okay let's speed up and let's see how far we can go and let's see oh wow it's struggling now down to 14 fps 13 yeah, when we are loading in more of the city, it... Well, okay. <laughs> and we collided with the taxi there, that caused our frame rate to disappear. Okay, whoa. Hello the taxi. I want to look at some of these NPCs, because they're going to be interesting. They could just stand still, though. Just look how, like... Look how naturally they're kind of, like, looking around the place. And that's, like, every single... Did you see that that guy just, like, naturally raised his eyebrows and stuff like that? Like, all those tiny details that make even NPCs look more alive. Now, clearly, in a scene like this, where you have, you know, some shadows here, like, light piercing in between the skyscrapers here, the main thing that really makes this scene is the lighting. And that is all thanks to the brand new Lumen technology inside Unreal Engine 5, and it does look pretty spectacular. So, like, look at the difference between the light coming into here and, like, underneath the tunnel. You can see how it divers away on this column right here. It's not like the days of like old ambient occlusion where everything had to be lit so unnaturally just so you can see what you're doing. Like here, this actually feels like I'm under a viaduct. The light comes in pretty naturally and I can drive. I can drive? Sure, let's turn this into GTA, let's go. You can see like the reflections going off the car. That is really impressive. Now that is probably not like full on ray tracing, but it is still very, maybe not super realistic, but convincing enough. But honestly, the reflections do get a job done. Like if you wait for some people to like uh, walk past, you see, really, now that I'm trying to like demonstrate it, no one's gonna walk past. Are you kidding me? The street's completely empty. <laughs> Hello people, how are ya? It's literally even difficult to turn around with a frame rate this low. But yeah, look, can you see that? As I drive by, you can see the reflections of those like trash cans or whatever, of the people. It like it all gets reflected pretty nicely, actually. Now it's kind of hard to judge whether all of these like you know glossy surfaces here and puddles reflect correctly, because when I get close to them, they just kind of uh you know stop being as visible. That's just kind of re realism for you. So like I, I, I'm struggling to see if like, for example, my character is being like reflected or not. But I don't, I don't see, actually, there's a bit of a shadow. Actually, I think that's just a shadow of the building. Especially seeing how I'm running a 1080 Ti on here and a 3700X, I can't expect them to, you know, run like full on ray tracing on this. Wow, is this the menu? I control it, I control it via the square brackets for some reason. But look, why does it look like I'm controlling like an old Macintosh or something? Okay, what options do we have? Ooh. Now here's where stuff gets interesting. What enough is crowd and traffic? Okay, that's cool. You can literally just like see all the entities it's simulating. 
that is actually pretty cool. What's post-processing filter? Oh, it literally just makes everything like matrix green. That's cool. Nanite view. Okay, that is interesting. It shows you how it splits up the scene. That is really interesting. Look at that. You can see exactly how everything is clustered up. Wow, just look at it. Look how many individual planes and ways of splicing up the scenes managing at the same time. Is it, isn't that insane? Isn't Unreal 5 just absolutely insane? Here's something we can do. Max everything out. Max crowd, max traffic, max parked cars. This, ladies and gentlemen, is apparently peak Unreal. And our frame rate is now even lower. And yeah, the city does feel really alive with all these cars everywhere and people walking around. It's a nice car over here. Hmm. Okay, so we talked about like lighting and reflections, but another key part of making a game feel real is the actual scene itself. Talking about geometry and the actual resolution and quality of the assets. Now looking at the static object like this lamppost here, for example, yeah, it does look pretty high res. You can, if you look super close, you can make out the individual pixels almost kind of on the texturing. And even the little like, I don't know, barb or whatever it is around the lamppost, like even the geometry on that is pretty insane. You can't really see any jaggedness from like the poly count being too low. I mean, compared that to games that were coming out around the time I started playing games, like say Need for Speed Underground or Doom 3. Note, I didn't actually play Doom 3 when I was that young, it just came out around the same time I started playing games. We've uh, definitely come a long way, haven't we? So this is all well and good, but one other thing that developers have to keep in mind when utilizing such powerful new tools is that as many people as possible can actually play their games. And while with a 10 Ti for example, the experience is definitely not great, it can definitely be tuned to be playable. But what if you don't even have a 10 Ti? What if you have a car that's even older? Are you just out of luck? So in the spirit of investigation, let's try out a slightly older combo. An FX8350 CPU and a Radeon R9 280X graphics card to see exactly how well that will manage this. Okay, so my test bench with the R9 280X and FX8350 is here. Now let's see exactly how well it will perform in Unreal Engine 5 Matrix City demo thing. Oh, that's a good sign already. Oh boy, I don't think this is... Yeah, this... Um, what is going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this dog? Guys, I hate to say it, but I think we're in the Matrix. <laughs> and also, I hate to say it, but I think I broke the Matrix as well. I mean, when it comes to actual frame rate, it's not too unplayable. It's got me on actually a pretty similar level as our 10 Ti. Uh, uh, but probably because we aren't actually rendering any buildings or stuff like that. All we're rendering is uh, people and pop parts of cars apparently. This is actually uh, pretty surreal, especially with this music. Yeah, okay, let's try and fix this. And now I'm not even getting a display anymore. Uh, that's great. So what can I even say here? That looked absolutely amazing. I can't wait until more games will start using Unreal Engine 5 because it just looks fantastic. Though sadly it also shows how quickly Hardware we once thought is going to last you forever is now being phased out. And even my Tink Ti, just a few short years ago, the best graphics card of its kind, is now showing signs of aging. So I guess an upgrade is on the horizon for me, and most likely also you. But let me know what you think of this demo down in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what you think of such an insane game demo. And also, if you found this video helpful or useful or funny or any positive emotion really, then maybe check out our Patreon down in the video description below because even just one singular dollar month truly goes a long way while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also love to thank my existing patrons Gavin Burns, Ryan OKB, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcraft, Lance B and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so so much, this support truly goes a long way. Down there you're also going to find our merch store, our discord server and our social media links as well. But anyway that's it, it's I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to subscribe, like, whatever and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone, good bye.